thankful to see so many of you here today. My name is Wai Fang. I'm not representing the organization that I work for, but I'm here speaking in my capacity as a treasurer of the Singapore Democratic Party. Wow, so nice to see so many faces. Firstly, so of course, I will thank Kui Hui for organizing this event and for inviting SCP to be part of this. So the government recently announced that it's pumping in $4 billion to subsidize MediShare Life. It sure sounds like a lot of money, but of course it's $4 billion over five years. So in other words, it's $0.8 billion a year. How much do we spend on healthcare each year? We spend in excess of $12 billion a year. So how much is $0.8 billion? It's a measly 6.5%. Peanuts, yeah. The peanuts have grown bigger, actually. So, to put this in perspective, how much is $0.8 billion? How much does the government collect in GSP revenue last year? Anybody know? More than 10 billion bucks, okay, in GSP revenue. That's more than 10 times the subsidy given to MediShare Life per year. What about road tax? What about road tax? Road, road tax, okay. <laughs> One year income from road tax is more than enough to cover the $0.8 billion of subsidy. Okay? So that's $4 billion in five years. That's what Tamase offered for Olam International, the debt-ridden company. That was easy for the government. And yet, the government has already warned us that premiums from medical life will increase after five years. Furthermore, we are concerned that all these subsidies do not go directly to patient care. Instead, it goes to the medical life insurance provider. That we know medical is already the most profitable insurance company in the world. For the past 11 years, medical has an average medical loss ratio of 63%. Last year, the medical loss ratio reached a historical low of 44%. In other words, for every $100 of MediShield premiums that the government collects, it pays out $44 and pockets the other $56. Now, I can't think of any other businesses in the world that's so profitable. By comparison, in the United States, which is the most capitalist of countries, private health insurance schemes under Obamacare are not allowed to have medical loss ratio of less than 80%. Okay, meaning they cannot have profits of more than 20%. But wait, the government saying the rest of the world is wrong. All the private insurance companies for using medical loss ratio is wrong. Our very responsible government says it takes a very long-term and sustainable view of everything. Therefore, the medical loss ratio is less appropriate approach. So it introduced what it calls the MediShield incurred loss ratio that takes into account future liabilities. And using this calculation, the ratio is 96%. So the government says medicine is not so profitable. It only makes $4 profit for every $100 it collects in premiums. Do you believe them? No. The government needs to stop making money from Singaporeans at every turn. Yes, it is unacceptable that yes, while it makes a big deal of increasing subsidy for healthcare, it makes money from Singaporeans from medicine line. And how are premiums calculated? Where is the transparency for this? Premiums keep increasing as we get older. But that's a time when most of our income will decline and we are being forced out of the job market. In addition, premiums for medical life will be taken from our MediSafe account. And MediSafe account is our CPF account. So there's already very little money left in our CPF account after paying for our very expensive HDB flats. Taking even more money out, to service medical life premiums will mean greater hardship for Singaporeans. And remember, the government says it will not increase premiums for five years. So what does it mean? It means premiums will go up on the sixth year, lah, right? Singaporeans must be very wary of this. This is a sugar-coated poison that will cause us dearly in years to come. Remember the GST. It started at 3%, went up to 4%. Then now, it is at 7%. Remember the minimum income, minimum income scheme for CPF started with $80,000 and now it's $155,000.
with the premiums increase, more of your CPF money will be transferred to your MediSafe account in order to meet the MediSafe minimum sum. So we are always chasing after minimum sum. What is wrong with this government? We'll never see any money back to retire. Our healthcare financing system is too complicated for us to follow. You get payment from hospital bills from what? MediSafe, MediShield, MediFund, Pioneer Generation Package, out-of-pocket cash, which is already very high for us, private insurance, employers, and now MediShield Life. Just like the CPF scheme, the complexity of the system allows the government to extract much cash from us. The government says, it has multiple tiers of protection to ensure that healthcare is affordable. How is affordability decided? How much of household income is spent on healthcare when you need it? Why can't it be made simple? Why must the government spend so much of our tax dollars doing outreach and public education, trying to explain all these options for healthcare financing? Why not just simplify the whole system? Now, the SDP has a proposal that is very simple. Let's just get rid of the 3M and institute only one source of payment. It's called the National Health Investment Fund, or NHIF for short. Under the SDP system, we return all, my, all MediSafe money to Singaporean CPF account that you can keep for your retirement. And under our plan, Singaporeans pay an average of $400 a year into the fund, and the government will pay the remainder of the approximately $12 billion into NHF. NHIF. So when we are hospitalized, we pay only 10% of hospital bills, kept at $2,000 per year. While the funds, while the NHIF pays the remaining 90%. In this way, the government pays 70% of our country's total health care expenditure. This percentage is what governments from other developed countries are paid. At present, the government pays only 30% and makes Singaporeans and businesses bear the bulk of the healthcare expenses in Singapore. This is wrong. I repeat, the government had to stop making profits off the back of Singaporeans, especially when we fall ill. assume its responsibility in line with what other first world economies are doing. There is no need to raise taxes to 50%. There is no need to rate the reserves. Don't let the government fool you. Yes. <laughs> and the government should stop telling us that it is irresponsible to withdraw our CPF money at 55. That's right. Or that it is irresponsible if the government does not increase our reserves every year. We must reduce the burden on the sick, especially those who are poor. This is only possible in a cooperative and compassionate society. That's right. The government has a responsibility to ensure that the taxes collected are used for the common good. Yeah. Caring for the sick is not welfareism. It is the fruit of a compassionate society. The proposal, our proposal start out in the SCP National Healthcare Plan, caring for all Singaporeans. Makes healthcare in Singapore universal, compassionate and more efficient. It is a better alternative. And this alternative to the government's plans and our proposals on housing and education can be found on our website, yourstp.org. Come talk to us and find out more. We will present these proposals at the next general election. And we seek your active support and put us into parliament. Yeah. Now, now is the time, now more than ever, we need a competent, constructive, and compassionate opposition in Parliament. And SCP is that opposition. Yeah.